March 8, 1968. The Soviet Golf II class submarine K-129 goes missing with its complement of nuclear-armed ballistic missiles in the Western Pacific. Despite an intensive search, the Soviets failed to locate the sub and declared it lost with all 98 of its crew members. Unbeknownst to the Soviets, the United States has started their own search that did successfully locate the missing Soviet sub. Now sensing an opportunity to get critical intelligence on Soviet sub technology, the CIA develops an ambitious plan to raise the submarine from its resting place in water that's over 16,000 feet deep. This is the story of Project Azorian and how the CIA stole a Soviet submarine. First, let's look at K-129. K-129 was a Golf II class diesel electric ballistic missile submarine originally built in 1960. The K-129 was able to carry three R-21 ballistic missiles that could deliver a 1 megaton nuclear warhead that was 65 times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima, Japan. In addition, the submarine had six torpedo tubes, four in the bow and two in the stern. They could carry both conventional torpedoes and torpedoes armed with a nuclear warhead. K-129 was therefore an important part of the Soviet Union's nuclear triad. On February 24, 1968, K-129 embarked on what would end up being her last voyage. She left her base in the Kamchatka Peninsula on the Pacific coast of the Soviet Union and proceeded to deep water. K-129 conducted a test dive before surfacing and reporting that all was well. She then proceeded on to her assigned patrol route. K-129 would never be heard from again. It wasn't until mid-March that the Soviet Navy began to become concerned about the lack of communication from K-129. She had missed several check-ins and did not respond to an order to break radio silence. K-129 was declared missing and a search was undertaken to find the sub. While the Soviets were scrambling naval assets to search for the submarine, in the United States red flags were raised about the unusual naval activity. The U.S. concluded that the activity was likely in response to a missing submarine. This led to the U.S. examining their acoustic records from their sound surveillance system, or SOSIS, that were based throughout the Pacific. The SOSIS was used to track Soviet subs and on examination of the data collected by the SOSIS, they discovered that on March 8th, they had detected the sound of an explosion or an implosion. The sound was picked up by several different listening posts, which allowed the U.S. to triangulate the position to within five nautical miles of the ultimate wreck site. The Soviets lacked any system like SOSIS, and were searching for K-129 hundreds of miles from where the wreck was later discovered. Therefore, the Soviets never found the wreck and declared the sub lost with all 98 crewmen. While the Soviets ended their search in vain, the United States began a search of their own. This led to the USS Halibut successfully locating the wreck of K-129 in August of 1968, just five months after she had gone missing. The Halibut was equipped with equipment that allowed her to take thousands of photographs of the K-129 over the following weeks. These photos were then sent to the CIA to be analyzed for anything useful. The CIA determined that one of the Soviet nuclear missiles inside the sub might still be intact. In 1970, these photos led to a proposal to try and recover K-129 so that the R-21 missiles on board as well as cryptographic materials and the other major systems of the submarine could be studied. The plan was then approved by President Nixon and Project Azorian was underway. The CIA was presented with a seemingly impossible task. K-129 weighed around 2,700 tons and was in over 16,000 feet of water plus was over 300 feet long. It would be the deepest salvage operation ever attempted. On top of this, they needed to devise a way to bring the submarine to the surface 
in total secrecy so that the Soviets would not be tipped off at what they were trying to do. The plan the CIA developed was more akin to a Hollywood thriller than a real world operation. The CIA determined that the best way to retrieve K-129 was to use a large mechanical claw attached to a ship that could raise the submarine to the surface. The CIA then contacted eccentric billionaire Howard Hughes to bring the idea into reality as well as provide a plausible cover story for the operation. Hughes agreed to allow the CIA to use his company Global Marine Development to design, build, and operate the ship that would be used to recover K-129. The result was the Hughes Glomar Explorer. The Glomar Explorer was ostensibly a drill ship that would be used to mine manganese nodules on the ocean floor. The ship was over 600 feet long and weighed in at over 50,000 tons. In reality, the ship was equipped for the bottom to open up into a moon pool and allow the crane to be lowered discreetly and covertly to the ocean floor to attach to K-129 and bring it into the Glomar Explorer which would then close the doors and transport the recovered submarine to the United States where it would be broken down and then studied. The entire operation would be out of view of any aircraft or surface vessel taking place almost completely underwater. This would maintain the secrecy of the operation. After years of planning, the salvage operation began on July 4th, 1974 when the Glomar Explorer arrived over the wreck of K-129. The operation would take around a month to complete as the process of lowering the massive claw down 16,000 feet was a slow process. The claw did work as intended and was able to latch on to K-129 and the process of raising the sub began. The Soviets were aware that the Glomar Explorer was possibly trying to raise K-129, but they did not know conclusively where the sub was actually located and therefore couldn't protest the operation. In addition, Soviet engineers thought the task would be a nearly impossible one. Two Soviet ships did make contact with the Glomar Explorer, but it repeated its cover story of mining manganese which was sufficient enough for the Soviets to lead the ship to its clandestine task. At some point, during the process of raising K-129, several of the teeth on the claw that was gripping K-129 broke, resulting in a portion of the submarine breaking off and descending back to the depths that it came from. How much of the submarine was lost varies according to sources. Some report that a 100-foot section towards the stern was lost, while others report that the sail of the submarine containing the R-21 missiles was lost and only the bow with the torpedoes was recovered. Many details of Project Azorian remain classified, and we may never truly know how much of K-129 was successfully recovered or what kind of intelligence was obtained from the operation. What we do know is that at least six Soviet submariners who perished on board the sub were recovered and they were given a burial at sea with full honors. This was recorded by a documentary crew for the CIA and the footage was eventually given to the Russian government in 1992. This service is being conducted to honor Viktor Lokov, Vadima Kosciusko, Valentin Nosichev, and three other unidentified Soviet submariners who perished in March of 1968 in the North Pacific Ocean when their ship suffered a casualty of unknown origin. In a very real way, this ceremony has resulted from the continuing contentions between our two nations. There casually happened at a time when they were engaged in activities which they deemed to be in their national interest and protection. Their bodies have come into our possession some six years later through 
activities on behalf of our country, which we feel fit the same criteria. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Da blagovolit k vam i perežot vas, gospod. Da orazajet, oraz, ozarjajet vas, gospod, svojim licom i budet k vam milostiv. Da obratit k vam, gospod, svijet svoje blagosklonnosti i da s vam spokojstvije. Amen. The operation was documented by the CIA, but the footage has never been released to the public except for the 14-minute burial footage. Other questions remain about K-129. We still do not know what led to the sinking in the first place, or, at the very least, the CIA has not publicly disclosed any information that may indicate what happened. Several theories have been proposed, such as a hydrogen battery explosion like what I explored in my video on the USS Scorpion, an American nuclear sub that was lost just a few months after K-129. Project Azorian was the deepest salvage operation in history. We will likely never see the footage the CIA has of the operation or the true extent of the information that was gathered from K-129 or even how much of the sub they actually recovered. We also may never know what happened to the portion that was brought up from the deaths after the CIA had finished with it. Project Azorian will remain one of the most ambitious intelligence operations ever conducted. So I hope you found this video informative, and I will see you on the next one.